and waiting around. Um, well, hello for the last time in my studio here at McHenry. Uh, this is the last um, video we'll be doing here, and actually, I'm hopefully I'll get it in my studio at home studio, and for then we'll be able to I'll make sure everything is going to be working great. Um, I'm gonna actually put the board on. I'm gonna have uh, the whole studio is going to be rigged up so there'll be no problems hopefully. Um, so next week um, we're going to be in Minnesota, and so I'll be doing it on the road. Um, so we'll have a. I'll still do the Thursday, um, but it's going to be on the road again. And so it may be um, a plain air, maybe outside, maybe not. Probably not because it's going to be cold out there and it's snowing up there anyways. Um, and so this Saturday, um, I am having, if you're in the area, I am having a sale here because I'm moving out of this location. And um, there's going to be a sale on the 14th and 15th, Saturday and Sunday this week from noon to 3 p.m. And I have a bunch of stuff that I'm getting out of my studio and... Um, very inexpensive stuff that you can, I just need to get rid of, basically. A lot of art supplies. Um, we've got easels. Um, I've got a couple projectors. I've got um, tracing boxes. What else do I got over here? Um, a lot of acrylics and stuff from the companies that I don't use. And so if you want to come by, it's the 3314 Pearl Street, McHenry, Illinois, for all those local and stuff. But, um, but so then next week we'll be in Minnesota. The following week is going to be a Thursday, which is Thanksgiving. And so I will not have a thing that day. I'll probably do it on Wednesday for that week. And then again, I want to thank, because last week I didn't have, um, I didn't have any introduction to anything because of, it screwed up too, because of the sound, but hopefully the sound is good today. And, um, but um, again, um, I got this hat from a, an artist friend, Tom, and um, he had gotten it from a place um, let me see, we're right here. It's it's from this Ann Arbor Printers Place T-shirt company. So if you want to get some neat thing, I just saw it. Um, I'll let you know where I got where he got them and stuff, just to show you. And again, um, what else we got? Uh, my also people keep on asking a lot of times where where to sign up for my newsletter. Just go to my website. You don't have to email me to have you sign up. Just go to my newsletter, and on the bottom of the newsletter here on my website, and my website is beckerart.net. And just go down to the bottom to get my newsletter and it's down here and also you see i passed it um, what we're painting today and you always find the picture there except a lady had um did some old ones so i gotta figure out a way of maybe getting the the um the photos somewhere <laughs> um but way down here is you can sign up right here for my newsletter i know that's for the email right here right here is the newsletter you just put your name and your email and then just sign up and then you'll get every Tuesday, you'll get my newsletter. In the newsletter, you get what we're going to be painting, where I'm at, and every, all kinds of stuff. Or just go to my website, not sign up, and you can get the same stuff here. Except I do a couple of lessons and stuff in my newsletter. All right, let's get going here. I'm going to let me show you the value study. Um, so this is black and white, and so we're going to make it, and I already had done it already today in my class in Libertyville. I did this one in a blue and orange look. And I'm going to change the colors because I don't like this look. <laughs> and so we're going to go with a red truck and maybe a, a green background of the trees and more of a warm background and actually a cool background and a warm red truck we're going to do. Red trucks for like Christmas and stuff, it'll be a little bit better. And then also you notice right here in the photograph, this is all white right here. And it's actually the, the truck is very light. So if I use red, that's going to be kind of pink. But what I can do is make it a red truck right here and just make it a dark, dark, dark right over here. So you don't have to, just because the picture is white doesn't mean you have to make it white. You know, when you're using a black and white, people tend to think that you have to use, since this is a white, you have to use a white there. No, you can just make it a bright red. And then what you can do is make the darks even darker, like a um, very, very dark, dark. So let's go right to our tabletop and let's get going here. So I sketched it up um, again on my on my Stonehenge paper and cold press and um, taped it down with my, the tape is the, um, people keep asking about the soft tape. It's a soft tape that Holbein sells. And again, if you want to um, see my, my supplies, it's right here. I'll just put it up there really quick so you can see it if you want to go back to it. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> so we'll go back. And this is the soft tape. And it's kind of neat because you can see through it. So if you want to use this as masking, I found that you can use it really well for masking. Because you can put it around there and it peels up pretty nicely on the stone hinge, which is pretty tough to use the, um, the masking fluid because the masking fluid kind of tears off some of the softer papers. 
it's not a soft paper, but it's just somehow it, it'll take a little bit of the paper off when you're using some of the masking fluid too thick. All right, so let's get going here. And so what we're going to do is, like I said, I'm going to make it a red truck. And um, again, let me just show this here again. See how this is white and this is white. It doesn't mean you have to keep it white. You can use a color that's vibrant. Um, that'll be the same. And then when you go to do this part, it'll be that this is a bright color instead of having it a white. You know, it is nice to have it really light. You could do a light red, um, but red is a pretty powerful color. So it'll pop out as being light as the light part. And so I'll make it a little bit more orange, orangey red. So the sky is going to be a nice blue sky. And um, as you can see, I made this more of a turquoise and, and it doesn't read on my screen as a turquoise, but it's more of a turquoise truck. But I left this white and it didn't work so well because then it doesn't have the power to bring it forward and it does look a little light but I'm going to try to do it with the red. And so the first thing I'm going to do is do the background sky because the light to dark back to the front usually. I hope everybody found it. Um, <laughs> um, sorry this is not the 1111 or 1112 part. I just wouldn't go on to that. I'm not sure why I wouldn't go to that area on YouTube. So hopefully people will find it. I'm not sure how you guys found it. I was going to put the link up there. I was thinking, how am I, how am I going to show you guys where the link is? I had a Zoom meeting this morning for our meeting, a Lake Region Watercolor Guild meeting, and that all went out with no problems at all. So it's always this in the evening. So I'm going here with the blue, blue sky. I will keep the top of the truck nice and light. I'll go back here. I actually go through parts of this. That's the window back there. And I didn't wet the surface first. I'm wetting as I go along because I want to kind of go around this truck with a hard edge. There's a window right there. I'm making this more of a turquoise with the compose blue, not the compost blue, the compose blue. A little bit of this green to make it kind of turquoisey. If that's a word, turquoisey. So it's going to be a little blue. I'm making a very, very light blue though, because I want this red to really pop out on this truck. So I'm going to keep it real light. And in the photograph, it is a light scene back there. If you want, and also I extended the houses a little bit to this. I didn't, this is not a, this is a square and I'm doing a rectangle. So I added a little bit more truck and I added a little bit more house um, to the back here. And this is kind of like a, like a Florida looking kind of scene, maybe Miami. And, um, or maybe it's Cuba, you know, with the palm trees and stuff, with the old cars. So I'm not sure you make what you want. And put a little blue in the windows here. That's always good. When you're doing windows on a house that are, that are showing by the sky, a lot of times it's fun to just put a little blue in them. Same thing with the windshield here. I'll put a little blue in there. And then I'll put the dark and you can always leave it a little of the blue showing. And what else? Um, the, the metal, the chrome on a car. A lot of times you just put a little bit of the blue from the sky because it's going to reflect. It's like a mirror. So here in front of the grill, I'm going to put a little bit of the blue on top of that. There we go. See, I'm going to just put that right in there. Did you guys find the link or was it just, is this the same? <laughs> The same thing we were on or did you just see it somewhere else i'm wondering about that because i started it up again new and i thought maybe nobody would know where it's at and we're putting a little bit of blue reflecting the sky into the tires top of the of this um bumper is probably metal so i'm gonna put a little bit of blue on there and so that's all the blue that's all the sky reflecting into the metals and so now let's go and right away get in my background done these helms back there I'm going to make, um, if you see what I did on here, I made them warm because I wanted some warmth because this truck was blue and cool. I thought I wanted some warm in the background. Well, that, you do with that, you do that with snow scenes, but here I'm going to keep it um, cool on this one. And so what I'll do is I will just, of course, put a little bit of gray, a little bit of violet, a little bit of blue, and just kind of go over my house, the shadow area of the house. And I'm keeping this really, really um, low, um, values and contrast. I don't want a really high contrast back here. Too contrasty, my eye's going to go too much over there. So I'm just going to put in the um, grays and keep it back. I want to keep it back there. And 
And then there's another house I put back here that you can't really see, but you don't have to really identify that too much. I just want to identify the roof, the hood, not the roof, the hood of the um, car here by making it a little bit darker right there. Keep this house a little bit like it's a shadowed. And just so that it pops the truck out a little bit more. And so again, that's just very cool and gray. I'm not making it too colorful yet. Because if you make it like the photograph and that contrast, then it takes away, excuse me, from the truck. Oh, and I forgot to show us our um, craft beer of the week. Um, the craft beer of the week this week is from England and it um, comes through Seattle, but um, it's called a Winter Welcome Ale. Samuel Smith comes from um, England. And so that's our craft beer of the week. So toast everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. And so we're going to keep that nice and low key down there. I'm not going to do the um, fronds of the palm trees yet because I'm going to um, get them hard edged. But if you want to put a few of them in there so that you can see them a little bit, that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of green. I'll make my green with Kronecardum gold and some blue and keep it low key though. And these are going to bleed because um, it's wet, but that's okay to have a few of these fronds of the palm trees to sit there and um, be just soft edged. I'm going to put a few of those in there, not all of them. And now I'll go back in and get the hard edge ones. And they are a little contrast here, but that's okay. And you can even make them a little bit of blue, put a little blue in there so that they stay back. I want that stuff to stay back. It's all about dimension. When you're doing your painting, it's about dimension and how you can bring things forward and back. I took this tree that's in the picture. You can see right here in the picture, I took that tree out of there. Um, I just didn't feel that it was necessary to have a tree right there. I don't know why, I just didn't feel that it was needed there. Sometimes if you have a feeling, just go with it. <laughs> so I'll put these, and these are bushes over here, and I'll just put them in there. This is on the dark side of the house. I'm just gonna bring it as a shadow. You see how fast I did that? I don't make that that important. I want to keep that unimportant. It's about this truck. And then the, um, the shadows on the street can be like a gray, grayish violet or blue. And then I'll put a few of that and then maybe one over here. Nah, I'm gonna, I'll keep that. Let's see what happens. Because I know this is gonna be really dark. So maybe I'll just go a little lighter here, wet it a little bit with just a wet brush and then come darker as I go down here. And then later on, I'll make that really dark, as you can see in the photograph. It gets really dark over there. And I extended this, now the picture only goes to here, you know, in the photograph. But you can make it wider, or you can do it like the photograph. That's not bad either if you want to make a square. I just don't like square paintings as much as I like horizontal paintings. That's just a choice of you can make it for yourself. You don't have to follow mine. All right, let me see if there's any questions. Let's see who's all here. Hello, Linda. Hello, Everett. Hello, who else? Martina. Mill, Linda, Joyce, thanks for stopping by. Again, um, next week I'll be uh, plein air more or less, or away from the studio. And then um, again, in, um, for Thanksgiving, I'm gonna do it the Wednesday before Thanksgiving instead of that Thursday. I don't think you wanna watch me while you're eating dinner. <laughs> and so, um, let's see what we got here. So there, so that's the, that's basically the background and a little bit of the, um, on this side here. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know, just put them up there. Okay. These lights, I don't remember if in this time when they made this truck, if these lights were yellow, like they are, they're just clear, the blinkers. I have to look that up. And so I'm just getting some of these grays. I have a gray called gray on gray. I have a couple of grays made. If you want to make a gray, a lot of times just use compliments and they'll either make kind of a grayish or a brownish color. And when you're using compliments, but when I use lavender and orange together, that kind of makes kind of a nice gray, kind of a warm gray, purpley gray. So we can do that. I'm just going to put some of the grays in here and some of the, um, metal you know when the metal is probably going to be gray and so it does reflect everything but it also reflects some dark the dark areas but they're not going to be black there it's going to be just a, a reflection of the dark dark colors again
Again, I'm using a um, towel here on over my whole thing, so I can just wipe it anywhere, which I really haven't been enjoying. I noticed a couple of people have been doing that. So it's catching, it's catching. Get an old, get an old towel and just put it down on your, on your table and just use it for wiping your brush. I find it to be really cool. Now in this reflection of the door, um, in this area, it's shiny. It's a shiny vehicle. So you're gonna get like, almost like a mirror effect for things that are around it. You can do that or you can just make it the way you want, like a clean wash there. But it looks like I'm ready now because that's my background and I will do the, when it dries, I'll do like the trunks and I'll do the hard edge stuff. But now let's go right into our car. And so we're gonna go in with a red and I'm gonna stick with a red that's red and a little bit of orange. And I go with the lighter color but it doesn't mean I have to use pink. Um, people tend to think that uh, lightening a red, it makes it a pink though, and that's not a bright red. Bright red is almost like a light color because it's bright. The, the intensity of the red makes it look light. And then just maybe use white or use the white of the paper just to um, leave the light there. And that'll be that'll make it kind of a pink, but don't add white to your red to make it lighter. That's the only color that you shouldn't use that because it'll make it a pink and pink is not a bright red. And if this is a bright, bright red car, pink is not gonna make it look bright, bright red. You want things to pop forward and lights and darks make that happen, but also bright colors come forward. So that's one of the things. So do you use the light of the paper or is white or do you use a bright color like red? You know, so you can do it either way. And, or both ways, like I left a little bit white on top of that, and then I'll just peel off the, take and soften it a little bit with a little bit of water. I, I don't want to touch the sky because it's still wet, so it'll bleed right into the sky, unfortunately, which I did. And so here you can also leave little, um, you can use it not as thick and leave a little white of the paper, which will make it kind of pinkish, but um, again, you have to decide what's better. The brightness of the color or the lightness of the of the paper and you, and you can do both like I've done here in a couple of places I've done both like here I went across with a thin layer of red and I put a little orange in it sometimes just to give it kind of a different um, tinge of color of red and here I'm gonna wet the surface first with just water and my water is red now and pink so it's gonna go over here so you can actually just use the water and yes it is pinkish but it's not like a um, like when you use white, it's kind of like opaque white. That doesn't happen. It just it's a float there, and once it dries, whatever pigment's left of the red will be fine. And then I'm gonna come back in here later with a really dark, dark red, like almost a brownish red, purple red. It'll be like this. I'll have something like that. See, that's gonna be a really dark, dark red, almost a black type of red. So the red will just shine as being light which I didn't do this afternoon. I actually used the white of the paper. So I just want to show you did both ways of doing that. It's kind of nice that I do two of them because then I can show you both ways. Here I use the light of the paper as white. Here I'm using the brightness of the color. Now the board, the running board, I'm not sure what that color would be. And when you're making up something from the black and white, it's whatever you want colors to be. It's your choice. You don't have to copy because you can't. <laughs> and I actually do that with all my classes. When you go to my classes, my workshops, I don't give you a um, colored image because I want you to look at the values and it doesn't really matter sometimes what color you use. It's more or less get the right values. Get the right values here. I'm gonna go in now and make this dark. I'm gonna get the soft edges and look at how dark that is. I'm using like an alizarin crimson and going down through here. And so that's how I get my dark. And I'll even push some of that in here and you can mix it together with the red that you're using and it'll blend together really nicely. Here, I'll make that a little bit darker. The side of that door is really dark on parts. So maybe on the bottom, I'll make it a little bit darker right here. And it is painting a section, but we already got the background done. So we don't have to worry. And I could have gone into this area where it's dark of the thing, but I'm just, um, it's easy enough with this brush to not go and do that. I'm just gonna, Come down here and just get the edge and leave the running board alone. Then I'm going to go into the fender and I'll let this part bleed. Oh, that's whiter. That's lighter, I mean. Oh, well. Carol wants to know what red. Um, I use Scarlet Lake as my brightest red. 
Scarlet Lake. Nice, bright, bright color. Boy, if you use Scarlet Lake by itself, it is so bright. Look at this. I will leave a little bit of white right here, and I'm not going to touch that area so that I keep a hard edge right there. Um, so I'm just going to go really close to it, but I'm not going to touch it because I want that to be a hard edge. So I get really close. I'll go around my lights. Scarlet Lake and Brilliant Orange. Brilliant Orange is kind of nice to put in there too. Now this, the under under the well here, it's going to be darker, but I can go right through there at first. And again, a lot of these places are white in your picture. You don't have to make them white. You can just make them bright instead of white. Bright instead of white. There we go. There we got a little saying. Bright instead of white. Another little saying that I always make up. And I go around here with water. I come down here. Go around the, the metal. Hard edged. So that's why I don't wet everything all over. I'm leaving that those parts alone. Though some of it you could go into. Like here I'm going to go into a little bit. Because it's, it's metal. So it's going to reflect off some of that red. So some places you can go in a little bit. And some places stay away from it. And then after you put that first wash in, then use the, the amount of pigment you use for intensity. Like really go in here and get a thick amount of pigment so that it's more intense of that, of that color. And if you want it dark, then of course use the dark color, which I have to. If you see, here there's shadows across the edge here, dappled shadows. And so now I have the water down. I have everything. That's a little plaque over here. That's fine. I can let that bleed together. The running board, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, the tire is going to be dark, so I can go right into the tire with the red, which is probably a good thing to do. And then um, the rim of the of the truck is light, so I'm going to just leave that alone. I don't want it to be red. And now I'm going to go with my dark dark. So that's a lizarin, maybe a brown. I use um, the brown, the imidazolone brown. <laughs> Try to say that a few times fast. And so I'm going to go in here and look at where those darks are. There's a dark around here. And I'm copying the picture. You know, I'm just getting a soft edge. That's how you get the soft edge when you wet it. That's the only way you can get a soft edge. You wet it and then apply it in there with a thick amount of paint. And it won't run all over the place. And here I'm just going to put these little shadows on there. And so see how it isn't white. It is a red bright color. So it kind of gives you the same effect, but you just do it two different ways. And I'm going to come down here and get almost a purple. I use permanent violet and this brown. Maybe this is a lone brown. Come down and just make it nice and thick because it's already wet. And I'm going to come around here and um, go around my lights. Go right into my wheel. I'm not going to try to separate. And same thing here. I'm just going to go right into the wheel. So I got the hard edges where I need them. You just try to paint things together. Try not to do sections by section by section, like right into this, into the um, wheel right down here. Now I know a wheel isn't red, but I'm making it, now I'm making a little black in there. Put a little black, make it dark. But by having the, uh, being a red truck, it's gonna reflect into everything. So you, if you start out with the red and it'll reflect in there, that's fine. And come down here. And then the whole bottom part here is going to be really dark. You know, not maybe as dark as in my photograph, but I want to see a little bit of the stuff. But you could you can make this all dark and not even show the front as a piece. And that's a good thing because you want people to look at your center of interest and then the rest, you, you don't want to have so much interest in everything. This grill basically is our center of interest right here. Because this could be a lot of detail in that grill. And so now I'm going to go right into the bumper. See, I don't separate the bumper from the wheel. Um, though it is kind of separating because I have a little bit less um, color there, a little bit less um, pigment. But then I'll go back and I'll kind of go in here and then just go around the front. And this afternoon I kind of did this all together, but I decided this time I'm going to do it separate. It's still dark, but then it'll give me a little bit more um, where it kind of separates from each other. And so I'm going to take and wet this as I go along here. This is dry. So I'm going to kind of come here. The top of the bumper is light. And so I'm going to use some of the blue from the sky, remember? And we're just going to put that in there. Take a little water, let it be soft edged. Put a little blue on there, the reflecting. All this stuff is shiny. Shiny stuff reflects everything. 
So I'm putting a little blue, the blue in the sky in there. The street on the bottom will be gray a little bit, so I'll put a little gray in the bottom part here. Let me just show you closer up so you can see this. See how I have a little blue in there? Um, and it's blue and the gray in the bottom. So it's hard, kind of hard to see when you're farther away, but there's, there's a change of values and stuff in there and change of color. And now the, um, the license plate and just the going around things that are going to stay light. This um, license plate is actually dark with light lettering and light. So what I'll do is I'll get the color of the lettering, which will be like this darker color. And then when I put the dark over the top of that, then I'll negative paint out the, the lettering. I'll put that little blue in there. And so now I'm getting the middle tones. I'm not to my dark yet. The tire is a, was a dark, definitely. This is still my middle tones. I'm going to go in here and get the middle tone of the, of the metal. And so I'm going to stay away from the light area areas. Because that was the first wash we put in, that light blue. So that's going to be that. Now we're going with our middle tones. And see how I go into things? It's not the dark, dark. The darks will create the shapes of those, of the grill. Now back to our red over here. And I can just wet it as I go along. There's nothing, there's nothing wet over here, so it's going to be nice and hard edged. Now this brush is too big, so I'm going to go into my round because it's a little area right there. I already went into the light where I shouldn't have. Had. I'm going to take a little bit of the red, go around here, getting a little bit tighter, but that's okay. I'm just getting tight so I want it to look like a nice line here. And I come around here, take my dark red, my alizarin, put it over here where it's supposed to be, like in the picture. And it comes around here, goes by the light. And if you use it thick while it's wet, it's not going to bleed that far. It's going to stay right where you want it to stay. And that's even different right here. It kind of comes down a little bit farther there. And it kind of comes down and it goes around here. Make that really nice and dark. Any more questions, just let me know. Gary will, Gary's here again. So we're gonna go here, put some more red in these some of these areas. Now GMC is usually written in red, I think, on some of the trucks and stuff. So that kind of is right, one of the reasons I wanted to do this truck in red, because in this one I put the red in there of the GMC, but it didn't look so good because it was not a red truck. It was a blue truck and it kind of like stood out a little bit too far. All right, so that's the big areas done. I'm going to take, use a little gray on the running board here. Use a little gray and just get that done. And then now, cheers everybody. I got to try this again. This is a uh, welcome back ale. I guess it was after, it's just uh, right now in season 2020 to 2021. Winter welcome ale. All right, very good. So now we're going to go inside the truck and we're going to, uh, we got pretty much our middle tones all done, our lights done. And now we're going to go into our big darks. And that, I mean, was a little dark, but um, I, I might as well do that right away. And so now I'm going to go right into the cab and start doing all these darks in there, like um, right behind the driver here. Oh, this cab must be, I, we have a, uh, oh, yeah, it's on the right side of the steering wheel. <laughs> So we're going to go in here and make these darks. And this is like um, details, but these are my biggest darks, except for the down here. But I have to wait for that to dry before I get down there. So I'm going in here, get the darks inside the cab. And I'm using the same darks I used down here, the bright dark reds. Because when you use it one place, don't be afraid to use it elsewhere. And then inside, I'm going to keep it kind of warm in there. So a lot of times I like to put reddish orange inside the eaves of things. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to take a little bit of the brilliant orange and just kind of dump it on the top part. It makes it shine inside. It's, it's pretty neat trick. Anything that's like an eave of something, you put a little bit of orange in there. I can't do that. I just stick up here. Just go. And so I have a little orange in my brush and it kind of glows then. It makes the inside glow. And so I'm using a little bit of black. 
And um, again, for those of you who are new, I use black and I use white. Um, but when I use my black, I always put color on top of that too, then too. I, I just don't use black by itself. I use a color to make it either warm or cool afterwards. I know the, um, the, the picture doesn't have a um, rear view mirror in it for the truck. I decided to put one in because I, I like the, the negative painting part of this. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of rear, rear view mirror in there. And then I might dip into some orange, let that float, float inside the dark. Go with some blue, nah, purple maybe, here we go. And then the steering wheel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little switch off from negative to positive because it goes from a negative to a positive in the picture. Uh, you don't actually see the negative part because it's so dark you don't see the steering wheel. So what I did is I decided I'm going to make this part light of the steering wheel and then when it goes on the other side over here, I will make the steering wheel dark. See, it's like a reverse juxtaposition. If you can do that, it's awesome and watercolor. It's one of those watercolor tricks that is really fun to do. Now the mirror on the outside here, we're gonna make it red. I don't, you barely see that mirror. And it may not even be a mirror, I'm not sure, but I decided to put a mirror in there. So know your subject matter. That's one of those things, know your subject matter. I don't have a mirror on this side because that one got ripped off when he was going down the street one day. Or just make up stories. <laughs> Yeah, I do here. And so then we'll get these windshield wipers. I can't quite see. And if you're, uh, you know, if you're doing cars uh, and you love doing trucks and cars, old cars, you're going to know and you're going to have great pictures of them and you're going to study them and you're going to know what's going to be in each one of these kind of cars. And that's how come you should always know your subject matter. Know what it is about your subject matter that makes it what it is. I'm going to put GMC here real quick since I have red on my brush anyways. I'm just going to go real quickly and I'll do a dark around it. And some farts. I don't want it to be as direct with this. I, it's not, I don't want it to be that tight, basically. A couple of little red reflections off the, off the chrome. And so we're getting there. See how it's always coming together? The darks always bring things together. And so while we're going to wait for this stuff to dry, I'm going to go back here because this is dry now, and I'm going to get the low key stuff back there, um, but hard edge stuff. Remember I said I was waiting for the hard edge. I don't want to make it contrasty. I just want to make the same colors that I used before, kind of a grayish color. And I will put in like the windows and, but not very contrasty. I want it to stay back there. So don't be making this really contrasty like you have here. Excuse me. And we're going to kind of come this way and just, that was a little bit bluer. So a little bit more blue in some spots. And here I wouldn't put orange in the east because I don't want my eye to go over there. I don't want it to be that important. just wanted to have some idea of what is going on back there. But I don't want you to go back here and look at exactly how detailed it is. And there shouldn't be anything back there that you want to see. It's just the, it's just the background. Low, um, low contrast. That's how you keep things back. Don't make it too contrasty. I will be doing a video soon on, um, on how to um, take old paintings because I have about 100 paintings that both sides were used and it's not a good painting. And so I put that up on Facebook and um, I said that I was going to, I was asking for uh, ideas what to do with paper that you painted both sides and you have, no longer can do anything with it. Um, and so I got some great ideas by you guys, put them down there about all these things you can do. And so I'm going to set up a little video and show you all the things I will have done with those um, good, bad paintings that you no longer can use the paper. You can use the paper, but you have to do some stuff too. I'll do a little bit darker on the rooftop here. And then the trunks of the trees real quick. Boy, it's already 7.15. I guess I took a while to get on here today. <laughs> All right, so there's the dark, a little bit darker, and it gives me an idea what's back there. Now let's get this big um, dark, dark shadow in the front here. So I'm gonna take, um, when you're doing shadows on a white surface, it could be any color, any color you'd like. If it's a gray, you can, it's kind of like in the white field, that's fine too, you can do whatever. What I like to do is pick up colors from the area. Um, so I have a lot of bluish 
colors down here. So I'm gonna go with more of the bluish type of gray for the um, for the shadow. Because if that's what you started with, it's good to go with that. Because um, like I said, with grays, light, light grays and whites, you can pretty much put any color you want down there for the shadow. And then stick with that color. Don't switch it off to a different kind of color in the shadow. Stick with it. And so here I'm, I'm doing more of a, it's kind of like a turquoise blue. And it's my red and green type of um, complements. So I put a little bit of green in that gray too. So I'm going to come down here, just put a shadow in the front of the car. I notice that it's a little bit too, can you see that? I don't want to reflect. So, and you can put a little bit of the red in there too. I made the bumper this time darker than the, than the street, where in this one, I kind of made the street darker, made the street darker than the bumper. But I'm going to do the opposite of this one. I'm going to make this, um, the street a little bit lighter than the bumper and make the bumper really contrasty and bring it forward basically is why it's amazing when you do a painting twice how you always really um you know i want you to do a sketch of every painting you do it just helps you a little bit and um or just follow my videos because then it'll be like you did it before <laughs> and i'm telling you already what to do so then we're gonna go here any more questions guys let me know let me know you're out there. So I'm just gonna put a little shadow there. And so that's all good. That's gonna be good there. Now let's see what's dry here. Uh, this is dry. Let's go with the um, little fronds, the little and the and the palm trees. I don't want to make them too dark, so. Make them more bluish green. And um, I mean, you can have some things a little bit um, more contrasty, but I don't want to make it too contrasty back here. A few of them can be a little bit darker, but then your eyes going to go back there too much. And I want to keep it low key again, like I said before. I want to keep it in the background. These are palms, and there I have one. Usually, when you do a palm tree, what I do is I make one line. And then I add the fronds to that line. See, I just go up and down like this to that line because that's holding all those fronds in, in your palm tree. And there's so many different kinds of palm trees, so it all depends on what you want. And if the wind is blowing too, they, they all lean to one side. And some of these, I'm just going to keep it dull like that and um, blurry so that you don't see. You just see parts here and there, just enough. There's a few over here. I'll just get a few. See, I make the lines first and I make the little fronds in there. Line, then the little leaves or whatever they call them. And we've got the chunks of the trees maybe a little bit darker here. I'm just playing with the green. I'm just bringing that down a little bit. They're probably brownish or grayish or violet, but I'm sticking with everything to being the same over there. That way it stays back. Ooh, that was wet. That's okay. Make it a little bit darker there. I was going to put the line across the window. All right, so that's how here I'm going to make, I'm going to tone down this mirror a little bit. Just so it doesn't stick out so much. Part of the steering wheel will stick down. Um, through the glass, you're going to see the background, like maybe there's something happening back there. So I'm just going to put a few things back there just to make it look like you're seeing something back there outside and maybe over here. But that's so far away, you don't know what it is. And so I'm just making a nice little gray back there. Now these lights, that's, oh, these lights are so much fun. I always have loved that. As a, as a kid, I used to do a lot of, my dad was a mechanic and I used to do a lot of drawings of cars. I know a lot of ladies in my class don't like doing the cars, um, but guys, I think usually love doing cars. Something about, something in our genes or something that we love doing cars. Well, my dad was a mechanic and so, um, he was a mechanic on import cars, so a lot of VWs, Volkswagen, BMWs, Audi, Mercedes. And so I always drew a lot of the European cars. But um, then you start doing all the trucks and the monster trucks. But the headlights are always fun to do because there's a little bit of, they're almost like um, the glass, like a little vase. So you put some really dark darks in there, really light lights. The little dots too. I always like to put little dots because they're having like this little bit of um, 
like pattern inside the glass, like it was almost a crystal vase. And then later on, you can also go in with the white. I did that with a little bit down here. You can go in some of the areas. If you miss some or mess up some of your white areas, just go back in and just get those in there. Now we're going to do a little bit of these tires here. I got to rub here a little bit because I kind of did that. I'm going to take a really dark, dark right here and inside the wheel well. The hard edge, I was waiting for it to dry. Now I can go in there and just kind of where you can't see the difference between the tire and the wheel well. You don't need to see the difference. Just let it come together. The side of the running board here. And again, if you're doing this picture, I'd love to see it. Uh, thank you everybody who is posting. You guys did a great job with the, with the rooster last week. A bunch of you did the rooster. Thanks so much for doing it. it Look great. The fact that you're doing it is always the best right there. Just the fact that you're painting and that's more important than anything. You know, and um, do a lot of painting. That's how you get good. You get really good by doing a lot of painting. It's no secret. It's just a lot of work. Now I'm gonna go in here and get my details, my darks, my dark details. So I'm gonna take black and then mix colors with it. And um, I mean, it has to be super dark inside this um, area. You don't want to see much of anything. So I'm gonna go in there and, and I'm not gonna be as careful because if I'm too careful, that means the whole painting has to be done like that. I wasn't careful that, that with these areas. So you really can't do, um, like if you're picture perfect in one area, you gotta be picture perfect everywhere. If you're loose in one area, you gotta be loose everywhere. And keep the same kind of flow going with your with your technique that you're using one spot everywhere. You can put more detail like in your center of interest, that's okay, but um, don't have to make it detailed as in clean detail unless you do the rest of the painting that way. You can see how I'm just brushing back and forth quickly and I don't I'm not going slow and trying to get really perfect with the with the lines. It's kind of just, um, that's the kind of style I'm using on this. If I were to go in there with really fine detail where it's everything's crisp and clean, then yes, then you go in there and do everything like that. But you don't have to do that. You know, you want to kind of stick with whatever it is you started with and whatever your style kind of does, that's what you stick with. My style is a little bit looser. I'm not a very, very detailed painter where it comes to like I'm doing photographic type of work. I don't, don't have the patience for that, but there's a lot of people that do that, and that's fine. So just remember that um, if you do it in one spot, do it elsewhere. Clean. Like, if it's a clean style, then do everything clean. If it's a rough style, then do everything rough. And so, let's see. I got a little bit of shadow over here. I'm going to throw some shadow on top of this running board, just so. I look at it from a distance once in a while, or... Like for me, I, right now I can look at it into my monitor. And if I look at the monitor, it makes it smaller and it kind of comes together. And so you can look at it in the mirror, you can look at it on your monitor, take a photograph of your camera, and then look at it smaller just to see if everything's holding together as one type of thing. Now here we have little details of this little grill. And sharpen up the edge of that fender there. It's all details now. Once you get to a certain point, there's no more big areas, you get details. And so details go slow and really uh, make them look nice, make them look clean. Even if you have a fast style, it doesn't mean you're just going to not do the right edge. I mean, you got to get the right edges and maybe just quicker, but you want to still get the right edge where you're have it drawn and stuff like that. So it's not being messy when you're being loose and you're just being, um, see like here, I'm being tighter, but it's not so tight that it, it looks so um, picture perfect, this painting. Now, I'm not sure what, what that, um, the front grill has on it, not the grill, but this, um, what do they call those on the hood? Do you remember, Gary, what they call those? We have a, um, here up in um, the, where I live in near Volo, they have this auto museum. And 
hood ornament, that's what it is. The hood ornament, I'm not sure. Thanks, Gary. Um, the hood ornament, I can't quite tell what that is in this picture. And if I would look for this kind of truck, I could probably find it. But but they have an a auto museum here in, um, in our area near McHenry here. And it's in Bolo. And it's a Bolo Auto Museum. And they have every single car you can possibly think of. It's just amazing. And um, we went there a couple of times and took some pictures. We have to go back, actually. I want to go back and take some more pictures of all the chrome stuff. And these hood ornaments are just amazing on some of these cars. I don't know what that one looks like on this car, but I'm just making it up. So if you want to make it exact, you may want to look up this kind of car, GMC truck, and look see if you can find something with a hood ornament. So there we have that. Now I'm going to get some more gray bluish stuff and then put them into the lighter areas here so that um, it shines because the white is like the shiny part. And so if I put grays in some of these air, white light areas, then the little spots of light that are hitting will look um, a little bit more shiny. I'll make it look shinier. Put this little here. Oh, that was wet. Oh, well, we'll put that. That's fine. Little circles here, holding the grill. Now the I'm gonna make this license plate red too. What the heck? I'm just gonna put my um, backer. <laughs> I'm just gonna fake it a little bit here. But if you can always put your initials or whatever in there, it's fun. Go ahead and do that. You're not going to use it as your signature for this painting, but kind of fun to do that. A little orange here. I have two oranges. One orange right here has a little more yellow in it and one has more red in it. And I find that to be good to have those two because sometimes you're when you're using an orange with too much yellow in it and you mix a, um, orange and blue complements together, it gets too green because the more the yellow for the blue. So that's where you use the reddish um, orange, because then if you mix that with blue, you'll get more of a brown and not the green when you're mixing complements together. So a little bit more red here. Let's get this roof a little bit cleaner. Maybe the back. I know this doesn't have boards in the back. I don't see boards on this, on this truck here, but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a board. I'm gonna turn it sideways for a second. And I'm just gonna put this board back here, like it's just like one of those old wooden boards and on the back of the truck. And I just put that in there. Oh, what did I just what I just did? Put my hand into that. The nice thing is this paper rubs off really easily, so right away. I'm just tap it off. And we got one more minute left. <laughs> We're almost actually pretty good anyways, but let me just, um, got a couple more things here. Any more questions for anybody? All right, let me think. I think that's almost good. So let me just um, do these little, a lot of times they have these little bridge right there and I make the trunk has a little line right there. I just have to get one more thing done, but I'm waiting for that to dry. Let me just um, really quickly dry this real quick. This is not allowed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right here make their own thing, and then I'll be done. And then I would sign it over here because it's just like over here. It would seem like it wouldn't be right. One day I got to do a little study and t tell you how to um, a little lesson on how where to put your name. A lot of times the name is part of your um, composition. It can look really nice that way. So what I'm going to do is make the bottom of the fender nice and dark just to kind of separate it from the ground a little bit because that was really wet over there before. And I'll even put the tire right here. Like you can see the tire, even though you really probably couldn't, but I'm going to say that you can. And that's probably pretty shiny for you guys. You probably can't even see that. So you see how there's a little bit of dark right there. And then one last thing is uh, white. I'm gonna go with white. I'm gonna take white from my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it like the little, the little things that I'm gonna hit with just white just to give it the shininess to it. 
like here see a little white a little white in the headlights anywhere you can find a little bit of a because when it's shiny it's going to be a couple of spots going to be really white i always just like to hit it with little dots here and there and even in the white of the uh even in the red you just put a little bit of little dots here and there edge of the rim here of the hood All right. Well, sorry again, guys, about this at uh, the beginning of the video. I'm not sure why that happened again, but I'll try to figure it out. But we'll be back in um, next time we have a video. It'll be in Duluth and then uh, Minnesota. And then we'll be back at my studio um, in my home. I have a home studio, which I'm putting together since I'll be out of this place. And again, if, you, um, if you're looking for some deals and you're around the area, come uh, this Saturday and Sunday from noon to... 3 p.m. We're going to be here selling off all my art supplies that I don't need anymore and I can't fit in my studio at home. <laughs> and we've got a bunch of, um, if you want a French easel, boy, I've got like three or four French easels. And so um, here we go That's for this week. And um, I think I like it red better than the blue. And so let me just go to this screen here, ending screen, over this area. And um, so thanks, guys. Thanks for coming by again this week. Sorry again about the beginning of the show, uh, the paint along. But um, give, me a give it a shot. Try to do your little truck here. And then please send it and put it on my Facebook page. We'd love to see what you did. And if you want to switch things around, make it your own colors, that's great. I'd love to see what you use for the colors and stuff. All right? All right. So thanks again. Cheers. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.